Welcome to Classic Sitcoms, Facts, and Trivia. Uh, today's going to be a little bit different. Uh, we're going back a little bit farther than 60s and 70s. We're going way back. And we're going to do uh, aware what happened to uh, these uh, cast members from our gang, or the Little Rascals, however, whichever way you, uh, whatever you call them. Uh, so, and there's quite a few, so let's get started. Buckwheat, Billy Buckwheat Thomas. As an adult, uh, he followed a military career, enlisting in the U.S. Army at 23 years of age. He was later honorably discharged from active duty. His valuable service recognized with the National Defense Service Medal and a Good Conduct Medal. Following a military service, he had an option to return to acting, uh, being offered film and stage roles. Instead, he took a job as a film lab technician with Technicolor, continuing his work with film industry on the other side of the lens. On October 10, 1980, exactly 46 years after he auditioned at Hal Roach Studios, he died of a heart attack in his L.A. apartment. George Spanky McFarlane. Let's see. Uh, following the Little Rascals, McFarlane struggled to shake the Spanky stereotype and left showbiz at the age of 24 to join the United States Air Force. Throughout his life, he worked uh, various blue-collar jobs, including a soft drink factory, a hamburger stand, and a popsicle factory. Later on, he often gave talks about his experiences on the series. He didn't give up show business altogether, with his final TV performance being an episode of Cheers in 1993, in which he played himself, and not long after filming that episode, he died of a heart attack at age 64. In January of 94, he was posthumously given a star on the Hollywood's Walk of Fame. Matthew Stymie Beard. Um, despite appearing in a range of films, Beard retired from acting when he reached high school. Later, his life took a turn for the worse when he became addicted to heroin. He went into rehab, recovered from his addiction, and returned to show business. He appeared on Sanford and Son in the Jeffersons in guest roles and landed a regular role on Monty, as Monty on the show Good Times, in his appearance in the 78, uh, in 1978, the Buddy Holly story, he wore his trademark bowler hat. Beard continued to be sober throughout the rest of his life, using his own experiences to raise awareness about substance abuse through lectures. He passed away in 81, at age of 56, after suffering a stroke and sustaining head injuries from falling down a flight of stairs. He was buried with his famous derby hat, which he'd worn since his days playing Stiney on the Little Rascals. Billy Froggy uh, Laughlin. Uh, after the series, uh, in 1948, Laughlin was just 13, 16 years old. He was involved in a fatal road accident. The teenager had been delivering newspapers on the back of his friend's scooter in the neighborhood of uh, La Puente, California. Uh, he was a hit. He was hit by a speeding truck on his delivery route and didn't survive the accident. This tragic incident makes Lawton the youngest to die of any of the R gang actors. Eugene Porky Lee. Bear with me, um. Uh, Lee retired from acting after leaving the Little Rascals. Later, he even changed his name to escape the show business persona. Uh, for his new name, he chose Gordon Lee after Gordon Douglas, his favorite Our Gang director. He died on October 16, 2005, age 71, after battling with lung and brain cancer. Uh, Mikey, Mikey Gubitosi, a.k.a. Robert Blake. I know some of you have heard of Robert Blake shortly. Um, Blake continued with his acting career long after the Little Rascals with a brief break to serve in the U.S. Army. Although he was Italian-American from New Jersey, as an adult he was often cast as a Native American or Latino. He did, however, make a name for himself playing the role of an undercover police officer in the TV series Beretta. Although he found fame in Little Rascals and later roles on TV, he became most well known, known for his uh, life off screen. Blake became caught up in a scandal with his second wife, Bonnie Lee Blakely, cheated on him with Christian Brando, son of movie legend Marlon Brando, before being found dead in 2001. Blake was tried for her murder, but was found not guilty. 
He was, however, found liable for her wrongful death by a California civil court in 2005. Since his appearance is in the court, Blake has kept a low profile thanks to $3 million in unpaid legal fees and taxes filed for bankruptcy. Uh, Mikey, Mikey Algebra Daniels. Let's see here. Hold on. Uh, despite being so successful in Little Rascals, unfortunately for Daniels, his career never took off after he left the show. He married and had one daughter, but the marriage ended in divorce, and he was working as a taxi driver when he died alone in a hotel room in 1970. And then, uh, this thing's running pretty slow, I'm sorry. Uh, Mary Ann Jackson. Jackson had fond memories of her time in The Little Rascals. To fight this, she left acting behind to work at a department store. Uh, she reportedly has something of a social butterfly and loved to go to parties with her sister. She passed away following a heart attack in 2003. Darla Hood. Following her time on our gang, Hood went to high school where her interest in the arts continued. She formed a vocal group named the Enchanters and appeared in a film, The Bat, in 1959. She appeared alongside Vincent Price and Agnes Moorhead in what was her first and last film role as an adult. She always uh, remembered her time in Little Rascals, even as the years went by, and in 1979, she was in the midst of organizing a Little Rascals reunion when she went into emergency surgery for an app appendectomy. She went into heart failure during the procedure, dying suddenly on June 13, 1979. She was just 47 years old. Carl Alfalfa Switzer. Last but not least... In The Little Rascals, Carl's character was originally called Alfalfa, but this later became Alfalfa, spelled a different way. Uh, he later he left the series in 1940 and tried to find other roles, but found he was typecast as Alfalfa. As an adult, he landed some bit parts in B-movies, but his career uh, never went beyond that. He, is, he left show business, perhaps seeking a more peaceful life, but this would turn out not to be the case in his second career, Switzer became a dog breeder and hunting guide. This would be an unfortunate choice. He got into a fight over $50 in a hunting dog in January of 1959 and was fatally shot. I know this one was pretty long, but like I said, there was a lot of them. Uh, and I, I have seen a biography thing on uh, Alfalfa, uh, the Alfalfa actor. And uh, he lived, led a pretty rough life. I mean, he was a pretty rough customer. Uh, that's all I got for you. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you staying with me through this whole thing. I ask you to please subscribe. Thank you very much. Please share these out with everybody you know. Say, hey, old Uncle Bob needs some subscribers. So head on over there and subscribe. Click that subscribe button and hit that bell. And then you'll know when he puts a video out. And you could go watch it. Because it's fun. Appreciate you being here. Have a great day. God bless. I'll be praying for you.